everybody, it's Tyler here at Waco in Texas, checking in team number 3847. Uh, Spectre on this team uh, last year, division finalists at the uh, Texas uh, DCMP and looking for a great performance this year. Of course, hopefully you've seen this team. They're all over the Open Alliance and their incredible blogs uh, that they do every year. Uh, so hopefully you've gotten a good glimpse of this robot. We're going to give you a little more in-depth in what it, this entails. Uh, Spectrum this year, by the way, uh, actually shooting some cues as part of their strategy, so interested to see that. But they got a great intake, uh, two-stage elevator that will be going through. Uh, great aesthetic as well, too. Spectrum bringing a great robot every year. Let's talk more about it here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Kettering University is looking for talented robotics students who want to continue learning and innovating in a hands-on, real-world experience format. Kettering University representatives will be at dozens of FIRST events this season, including the World Championship. Go to kettering.edu slash FIRST to see locations you can meet a Kettering University representative. The Charged Up competition season is here. We have a ton of live Twitch and YouTube content coming to you. All of our uploads and archives, including shows, behind the bumpers, finalysis, and more, are available at youtube.com slash first updates now. Check out all of our live shows on Mondays and Tuesdays at twitch.tv slash first updates now. Emma, let's start out uh, with this intake here. I'd love to talk about some of the thought process behind uh, what has gone into it, and then maybe some of the strategy in regards to shooting cubes, like why you went that way as well. Yes, so we knew from the beginning that we wanted to intake cones and cubes from the same place and pretty much on kickoff day we already knew that we wanted to be able to launch cubes. So this intake is designed to be able to intake cones and cubes through the same gap. They both go up through here. The cone gets pinched somewhat near the flange between these two rollers and then the cube sits back here away from these two rollers. These rollers spin up. Um, they're basically flywheels. They spin up before we launch, and then we can control how far the cube is launched. When you're looking uh, from a uh, designer, regards to your intake on here, um, why go like these squish wheels here and then this type of material here? Did you kind of test out a different, couple different options for that? Yes, we tested out many options. We tested so many intakes. We had a lot of iterations and prototypes. Um, we discovered that we could get away with having these lighter silicone. These are polycarb rollers covered in silicone. Sure. They're a lot lighter, so we prefer them. But we couldn't have this one be a two inch. These are two and a quarter inch um, Andy Mark compliant wheels. And this is just what worked for intaking cones and cubes. Um, you mentioned kind of early on that you always want to kind of go the route of shooting and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, from your design wise, was there any other type of like main intake design you looked at doing, or was this kind of the thing right off the bat? This was kind of the thing right after that. Um, actually, how this was inspired was we tried launching with last year's EveryBot, and we noticed that when you tried intaking, it would flip up over this, because it would have like two wheels, it'd flip up over this one and it would launch. So that's how we got the inspiration. We realized that we could use this intake wheel roller as a launching. Oh, how cool. Can we see uh, Can we see a cube and a cone coming out? I love to kind of showcase how that works. And of course, uh, I don't know how far we want to shoot it, but a little bit of shooting would be awesome to see too with this. So that's really cool. I got to ask you from the, the cube shooting, are you always shooting no matter what, or is it only from certain areas? Like, how did, how did you determine like where in the field that you want to shoot the cube from? Yeah, we're always uh, launching the cube. We can launch from directly in front, of the, in front of the grid. That's where we control whether we launch onto the top node or the mid node. But we also realized early on that if we made a good launcher, we could launch from behind the charging station yeah. by just letting our bumpers go on the charging station a little bit. So our launcher was mainly for collecting cubes and throwing them into our community during autonomous. It, I say, are we potentially going to see like a uh, strategy like where you're actually going to launch it in auto or something like that, like on the charging station, like you drive up the charging station and then launch it on or anything like that? Potentially. Right now we're running um, three. I'm sure Evan will talk about this. Yeah. But right, right now we're running three cube autonomous. Uh, we launch all three of them. Oh wow. Uh, the third one is right before we go on the charging station. Let's talk about your elevator. Gabby and Daniel's gonna be covering uh, more about that. Uh, I see a great two-stage elevator you have. Uh, some awesome uh, pulley belts that have gone into it. Uh, so love to just hear how did this integrate? Uh, you know, when you're looking at packaging with your intake here, how did you get this all integrated the way you wanted to? And then anything else uh, you want to go more in depth on it? I mean, so here we have a two-stage elevator. It has a 60-degree tilt. 
Um, so it just goes up and down according to what the heights are. It can go up to mid cone and high cone. And then the four bar here, it uh, contains the intake, and then it just goes out and in to the certain height that we want to. One thing I got to ask uh, that, was, that was mentioned before is you talked about kind of the angle that your elevator's at. Like, how did you determine when you were uh, in design that, like, this is the optimal angle for our team? We kind of just knew that we wanted a two stage elevator kind of off stars, something that can go up and, like, get a good height so that we have a great angle to drop down the cones onto the little poles. And so from there, we kind of just tested it until we had it kind of right. And so a 60 degree angle gives us the opportunity to extend as far as we need to and still be in parameters for the event. So some things that we used on the elevator that are notable are this, continu this continuous belt. And then yeah. we also have two constant force springs to uh, give it more torque. And then on the four bar, we have polycarb um, pieces that are vinyl, a new technique that, we, that was inspired by the lady cans. So the first stage just went up, and um, that's basically like the height for, what is that? So this is for mid cone. Um, and then the next stage will go up, it'll go up even further to high cone. So it extends very far, and the whole reason that we wanted the elevator to be tilted is so that it could go up and out at the same time. Evan, let's try to wrap up on this robot talk about, uh, I know your team's using uh, Pathfinder this year from watching your OA blogs as well, uh, but you get some other cool software features that have gone into this machine, so talk to me more about uh, what you're doing from a software side. Yeah, so this year we realized that we wanted to be able to use the new April Tag technology. So for this year, we were able to integrate the Limelight 3 and that allows us to be able to see April tags around the field and localize ourselves to figure out what our rough position is. Sure. And then with that information, we're able to then generate paths uh, using on-the-fly technology uh, with Path Planner. And then we're able to go to specific points on the field a lot faster than we could normally and with more accuracy. And you're doing an Intelli op now too, right? Yeah. So, so we're looking at um, from a during the match, is, is all your scoring going to be done Intelli op? Is that kind of the plan that way? That's all going to be based on that pathing that you're doing? Yeah, that's the eventual plan. Uh, we're still working out some kinks in it, but that's where we're heading. Can you run me through on uh, on screen here a couple of your uh, path planner uh, uh, routes that you're looking at doing for auto or even during teleop potentially too? Yeah, so with our cube launcher this year, we're able to start right there on the bump side of the field, which most teams aren't doing this year because uh, you have to deal with the bump. And then we're able to just, uh, I'm going to play what the path does. We're able to turn around and then intake the cube right there, go back around there, shoot the cube once we're in the community zone, grab another cube right there, go over there, and then shoot another cube, and then eventually balance. Uh, currently, we're going a little, we have it going far off the map just because of the way the charge station uh, changes the angle, and then we plan to do that throughout the event. Well, Spectrum, I really appreciate you taking the time to tell us more about uh, your robot, what's gone into it software-wise and everything. Uh, this robot always a perennial contender every single year, so looking forward to seeing how you do here at Waco. So good luck here and, of course, throughout your entire way uh, through te Texas District. Thanks a lot. Thank you. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Kettering University is looking for talented robotics students who want to continue learning and innovating in a hands-on, real-world experience format. Kettering University representatives will be at dozens of FIRST events this season, including the World Championship. Go to Kettering.edu slash FIRST to see locations you can meet at Kettering University representative. The Charge Up competition season is here. We have a ton of live Twitch and YouTube content coming to you. All of our uploads and archives, including shows, behind the bumpers, finalysis, and more, are available at youtube.com slash first updates now. Check out all of our live shows on Mondays and Tuesdays at twitch.tv slash first updates now. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.